Hello everyone, Dr. Kofi here and welcome to Tutor Med, where everything medicine is simplified. This is our third lecture in obstetrics and gynecology and in today's video, we will discuss normal menstruation. At the end of today's discussion, you will be able to tell a normal menses from an abnormal one even without talking to an expert. Kindly consider subscribing to the channel if you are new here for notifications when new videos are uploaded. Ready? Let's begin. Alright folks, so the assessment of a patient's menstruation is based on her bleeding pattern during the previous 6 months and it applies to patients who are not on any drugs which have the potential to offset the hormonal balance of the body like being on hormonal contraceptives and again they should not be on any drugs which have the potential to affect the endometrial function. Now to determine or to find out whether the menstruation is normal or abnormal, we need to answer 5 questions. These 5 questions can be remembered using this mnemonic that every woman is afraid of abnormal menstruation. And so the focus is on the word afraid, but we will pay attention to only the last five letters of the word. Freed. F-R-A-I-D. Good. And so F stands for the frequency of the menstrual cycle. What is the frequency of the menstrual cycle? We want to ask. And then R stands for the regularity of the menstrual cycle. A stands for the amount of menstrual blood loss per menstrual cycle. I stands for intermenstrual bleeding. We want to know whether she has intermenstrual bleeding or not. And then D for the duration of the menstruation. Now after answering these questions, you will find out that a normal menstruation is one which has one for F has a normal frequency and then for R it occurs regularly and then for A the amount is neither too little nor excessive and then for I a normal menstruation is one without intermenstrual bleeding and then lastly for D it is one in which the duration of blood loss is not excessively long and so let's take a few minutes to understand each of these questions. Very good. Please do not forget to like and share our video and subscribe to the channel if you have not done that yet. And so let's begin with the first question. F for frequency. We want to know the frequency of the menstrual cycle. And so here we ask the question, how often do I see my menses? It is not enough to answer Oh, I see my menses every month. No. Get a menstrual calendar and determine the number of days in between your periods. Is it every 28 days? Is it every 31 days? Good. Now, how often should you see your menses for it to be considered to have a normal frequency? If you see your menses every 24 days, days to every 38 days you have a normal frequency and so normal frequency is anything between 24 to 38 days so menses is abnormally frequent it means you see it too often when it occurs less than every 24 days so say you see your menses every 20 days the old term to describe this abnormal pattern was polymenorrhea but we've stopped using that. Now we say the menstrual period is abnormally frequent. And the menses which is seen more than every 38 days is described as an infrequent menses. And so, a woman who sees her menses every 39 days, for example, has an infrequent menses, and that is abnormal. The old term used to describe this abnormal pattern was oligomenorrhea that is few oligo means few but again it's an old term it has been abandoned now if a woman does not see her menses for more than 90 days then she is said to have amenorrhea 
and so after frequency the next question to ask is regularity now to determine whether or not a patient has a regular menses you need to know the length of your menstrual cycles and so please follow closely now your menstrual cycle length is the number of days between day one of one menstrual cycle remember day one of every menstrual cycle is the first day of the bleed so the number of days between day one of one menstrual cycle and then day one of the next menstrual cycle and so let's assume that this is the one of one menstrual cycle and then this is the one of the next or the second menstrual cycle and this is the one of the third menstrual cycle and this represents the one of the fourth menstrual cycle now the number of days between two consecutive menstrual cycles is the cycle length and so let's assume the first cycle length here is 28 days then the cycle length here is 32 days and here 35 days now it is a common error to think that a person with this kind of pattern has an irregular menses or an irregular cycle i wanted to see because we tend to think that if the previous cycle length was 28 days then the next should also be 28 days before it can be considered regular but actually this is not the case let me give you a typical example when a woman gets her menses on the 6th of june and then gets the next on the 6th of july that's 30 days apart right good it is not compulsory for the third menses to occur on the 6th of august and so what is the correct way of determining the regularity of the menstrual cycle it is the difference or the variation in the cycle lengths and remember that when assessing a woman you are assessing over the previous six months like i mentioned earlier and so in other words over the past six months what is the difference between the longest cycle length and the shortest cycle length and so the longest cycle length minus the shortest cycle length and for this sorry for this example the longest cycle length was 35 days so minus the shortest cycle length which is 28 days and that gives seven days and so for a regular cycle the difference or the cycle variation should be nine days or less and so the pattern we saw on the previous slide is a cycle which is regular it has a regular cycle because the difference is seven days and for an irregular cycle the difference or the cycle variation is 10 days or more and so consider this woman whose longest cycle was 40 days and then the shortest cycle was 28 days over the previous six months you will see that the cycle variation or the difference is 40 which is the longest cycle minus 28 which is the shortest cycle and that gives 12 days and so since it is more than 10 this is an irregular cycle and so that is how to determine a regular cycle and then an irregular cycle good and so freed we've done f and r and so the next letter is a which stands for the amount of menstrual blood loss objectively the normal menstrual blood loss should be between 5 to 80 ml now about 70 percent of the blood to be lost flows within the first two days and so you'd realize that on days one and two the flow is quite heavier than the last days and that is normal but 5 to 80 ml how would the woman measure that to know that her menstrual blood loss has normal volume there is no syringe no one will do that and so generally whether or not the amount of blood loss is normal or abnormal it depends on what the patient thinks or feels but i want to point out that generally the blood loss shouldn't contain huge clots or even clots at all and then it shouldn't trickle down the thigh or else this is considered abnormal abnormally i mean heavy and then it should not be associated with anemic symptoms like dizziness palpitations lightheadedness and the like 
and so menses is said to be normal in amount when the menstrual blood loss volume does not interfere with the woman's physical, social, emotional, and or material quality of life. This presupposes that whether or not the menses or the amount of blood which comes is abnormal depends on what the patient feels. And so once it does not affect the quality of life of the woman, it is normal. And by physical quality of life, we mean that the woman is strong during the menstrual flow. She doesn't have any anemic symptoms or feels weak or anything. And when we talk of emotional quality of life, the woman is not bothered that her menstrual flow is abnormal. And then socially, the woman is able to engage in her social activities without being bothered about the menstrual blood loss. But once it interferes with these aspects, it is abnormal for the woman. And then for material quality of life, it means that she doesn't have to be changing, for example, her sanitary parts often because it bothers her. And typically, women use three parts a day. If it exceeds that, it is typically considered abnormal. And so the old term for excessive menstrual bleeding was menorrhagia. And for little bleeding, hypomenorrhea. But all these have been abandoned. We just say the woman has heavy menstrual bleeding if it is excessive or has light menstrual bleeding if she considers it too little. And so we move to I. I stands for intermenstrual bleeding. Now as the name suggests, they are usually brief bleeds that occur in between fairly normal menses. Now, intermenstrual bleeds are abnormal. The normal is that there should not be any intermenstrual bleed. None. Once present, it's an abnormal finding. An intermenstrual bleed can occur randomly at any time or it can be predictable. So, if predictable, it can occur early in the cycle, middle in the cycle or late in the cycle. But what I want to point out here is that intermenstrual bleed, which are brief bleeds, are not normal. Once they are there, they are abnormal. But if they are secondary to hormonal contraceptives, then we know the cause of the intermenstrual bleed. But once they are there without hormonal contraceptives, they are abnormal. The old term used for this abnormality was metrorrhagia. But again, it has been abandoned. And so it is just intermenstrual bleeds. Although there are other clinical contexts we will go into later when we are discussing pathologies. And so the last question we ask is D, duration. Now the duration is the number of days of menstruation. How many days does a woman bleed for? The abnormality here is that it can be too short or too long. But clinically, clinically, normal duration flow can be 8 days or less. So any woman who bleeds for 8 days or less has a normal duration of bleeding. And then it can be abnormally prolonged if it is more than 8 days. You see that there is no limit for short duration, right? Because there is no consensus for a short duration we don't know what the short limit should be for a normal individual but more importantly even if the patient bleeds for a short duration say for two days there are no specific diseases associated with short duration and so we do not pay attention to that but we only focus or we pay more attention to a prolonged duration of bleed more than eight days and we will see that later when we are discussing abnormal uterine bleeds the old term used for prolonged menstruation or duration of menses was again menorrhagia. But now that term has been abandoned. We just say prolonged bleeding. Very good. And so please be reminded to support the channel by liking and sharing our video and then subscribing to the channel if you have not done that yet. Now on this slide, let's take home some summary points. 
The first is that normal uterine bleeding or menstrual bleeding can be assessed using the abbreviation FRAID, F-R-A-I-D. Now, in the assessment, we conventionally use the bleeding pattern of the woman over the previous six months. And based on that, a normal uterine bleed should be 1. Normal in frequency. That is, it occurs every 24 to 38 days. A normal uterine bleed should be 2. Regular. That is, the cycle length or the variation in the cycle length should be 9 days or less. It should have a normal amount. That is, the patient should consider it normal and not bothersome. And then, it should be devoid of intermenstrual bleeding. And lastly, it should have a normal duration menstrual flow, that is 8 days or less. Any deviation from any of the freed parameters above is considered abnormal uterine bleeding. Now, while granting all these facts, we should remember and note that there is nothing absolute in medicine. In fact, we can have people with seemingly abnormal patterns like we discussed, but for them, it is normal. For example, you can have someone's menstrual frequency occurring every 40 days. And per our studies, it is abnormal, but it can be normal for her. And so, conditions should be individualized, although they should be investigated. But it doesn't mean that every person who deviates from the free parameters is abnormal. For some people, we have normal variations. For some people, it is normal for them. And so, thank you for watching. And then thank you for liking and sharing the video. Thank you for subscribing. And then I will keep you posted with more simplified videos. Until then, bye.